So this is Enoch's accurate warnings for this generation. But I must assert to you that it has been proven that these writings were before Christ either way, whether people want to say that it was re uh, directly written from Noah or Methuselah or Enoch, uh, because his great-grandson Noah did write many things, and his great-great-great-grandson Methuselah wrote many things and passed along many of the things that Enoch wanted to tell us about this generation. How is it that these things match up perfectly with what Christ himself says, Yahshua, or also known as Jesus Christ? For I will read from you from St. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 15, just a portion of what Christ says about this generation and how it matches exactly with Enoch's. Verse 15, it says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. 16. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. 17. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. 19. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. 25. Behold, I have told you before. 26. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. 27. For as lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of Son of Man be. 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will, there will the eagles be gathered together. 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So please put that together and realize that these uh, sayings from Christ are identical to Enoch's. So I'll read many statements from Enoch that warn you of this generation, to be warned of this generation of vipers and all these evil things that are about to happen. So please pay, pay close attention and you will understand. Realize that these wicked angels like Azazel and Samyaza the, of the 200 uh, the days of Jared that descended on Mount Hermon will be punished along with all the sinners who have learned from them. And remember, just like Back in the days where they were manipulating uh, animals and beasts of the earth, doing DNA manipulations, and even with the women of the earth, that they're doing that this very day. Uh, the same type of stuff, the hybridizations, the gene manipulations, trying to make super soldiers. The word of the blessing of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were to exist in the time of trouble rejecting all the wicked and ungodly. Enoch, a righteous man, who was with God, answered and spoke. While his eyes were open, and while he saw a holy vision in the heavens, this the angels showed me. From them I heard all things, and understood what I saw, that which will not take place in this generation, but in a generation which is to succeed at a distant period, on account of the elect. Chapter 46 There I beheld the Ancient of Days, whose head was like white wool, and with him another, whose countenance resembled that of a man. His countenance was full of grace, 
like that of one of the holy angels. Then I inquired of one of all the angels who went with me, and he showed me every secret thing concerning this Son of Man, who he was, whence he was, and why he accompanied the Ancient of Days. Verse 2. This is the Son of Man, to whom righteousness belongs, with whom righteousness has dwelt, and who will reveal all the treasures of that which is concealed. For the Lord of Spirits has chosen him, and his portion has surpassed all before the Lord of Spirits in his everlasting uprightness. Verse 3. This Son of Man, whom you behold, shall raise up kings, and the mighty from their dwelling places, and the powerful from their thrones, shall loosen the bridles of the powerful and break in pieces the teeth of sinners. Verse 4. He shall hurl kings from their thrones and their dominions, because they will not exalt and praise him, nor humble themselves before him, by whom their wings were granted to them. The countenance likewise of the mighty shall he cast down, filling them with confusion. Dark shall be their habitation, worms shall be their bed, nor from that that their bed shall they hope to be again raised because they exalted not the name of the Lord of Spirits. Verse 5 They shall condemn the stars of heaven, shall lift up their hands against the Most High, shall tread upon and inhabit the earth, exhibiting all their acts of iniquity, even their works of iniquity. Their strength shall be in their riches, and their faith in the gods, whom they have formed with their own hands. They shall deny the name of the Lord of Spirits, and shall expel him from the temples in which they assemble. Verse 6, And with him the faithful, who suffer in the name of the Lord of Spirits. Now to highlight chapter 54. Verse 1, Afterwards the Ancient of Days repented, and said, In vain have I destroyed all the inhabitants of the earth. And he swore by his name, saying, Henceforth, Forwards, I will not act thus towards all those who dwell upon the earth, but I will place a sign in the heavens, and it shall be a faithful witness between me and them forever, as long as the days of heaven and earth last upon the earth. Verse 4. Afterwards, according to this my decree, when I shall be disposed to seize them beforehand, by the instrumentality of angels, in the day of affliction and trouble, my wrath and my punishment shall remain upon them. My punishment and my wrath, saith God, the Lord of Spirits. Verse 5. O you kings, O you mighty, who inhabit the world, you should behold my elect one, sitting upon the throne of my glory, and he shall judge Azazel, and all his associates, and all his hosts, in the name of the Lord of Spirits. Verse 6. There likewise I beheld hosts of angels who were moving in punishment, confined in a network of iron and brass. Then I inquired of the angel of peace, who proceeded with me, to whom those under confinement were going. Verse 7 he said, To each of their elect and their beloved, that they may be cast into the fountains and deep recesses of the valley. Verse 8 And that valley shall be filled with their elect and beloved. The days of whose life shall be consumed, but the days of their heir shall be innumerable. Verse 9. Then shall princes combine together and conspire. The chiefs of the east, among the Parthians and Medes, shall remove kings, in whom a spirit of perturbation shall enter. They shall hurl them from their thrones, springing as lions from their dens, and like famished wolves into the midst of the flock. They shall go up and tread upon the land of their elect. The land of their elect shall be before them, the threshing floor, the path, and the city of my righteous people shall impede the progress of their horses. They shall rise up to destroy each other. Their right hand shall be strengthened, nor shall a man acknowledge his friend or his brother. Verse 11. Nor the son of his father and his mother, until the number of the dead bodies shall be completed. By their death and punishment, neither shall this take place without cause. Verse 12, In those days shall be the mouth of hell be opened, into which they shall be emerged. Hell shall destroy and swallow up sinners from the face of the elect. Chapter 64 In those days Noah saw that the earth became inclined, and that destruction approached. 
Then he lifted up his feet and went to the ends of the earth, to the dwelling of his great-grandfather Enoch. And Noah cried with a bitter voice, Hear me, hear me, hear me, three times. And he said, Tell me what is transacting upon the earth, for the earth labors and is violently shaken. Surely I shall perish with it. After this there was a great perturbation on earth, and a voice was heard from heaven, and I fell down on my face. When my great-grandfather Enoch came and stood by me, he said to me, Why have you cried out to me with a bitter cry and lamentation? And Noah answers in 6. A commandment has gone forth from the Lord against those who dwell on the earth, that they may be destroyed, for they know every secret of the angels, every oppressive and secret power of the devils, and every power of those who commit sorcery, as well as those who make molten images in the horror. Verse 7. They now know how silver is produced from the dust of the earth, and how on earth the metallic drop exists. For lead and tin are not produced from the earth as the primary fountain of their production. Verse 8. There is an angel standing upon it, and that angel struggles to prevail. These words are from Noah directly, the author of many books of Enoch who included Enoch's instructions and writings from his grandfather. Methuselah would also do this. Verse 9. Afterwards, my great-grandfather Enoch seized me with his hand, raising me up and saying to me, Go, for I have asked the Lord of Spirits respecting this perturbation of the earth, who replied, On the count of their impiety have their innumerable judgments been consummated before me. Respecting the moons have they inquired, and they have known that the earth will perish with those who dwell upon it, and that to these there will be no place of refuge forever. Verse 10. They have discovered secrets, and they are those who have been judged, but not you, my son. The Lord of Spirits knows that you are pure and good, free from the reproach of discovering secrets. Verse 11. He, the Holy One, will establish your name in the midst of the saints, and will preserve you from those who dwell upon the earth. He will establish your seed in righteousness, with dominion and great glory, and from your seed shall spring forth righteousness and holy men without number forever. Chapter 68 After this judgment, they shall be astonished and irritated for it shall be exhibited to the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 2. Behold the names of those angels. These are their names. The first of them is Samyaza, the second, Artis Kapha, the third, Armin, the fourth, Kakabael, the fifth, Terel, the sixth, Ramiel, the seventh, Daniel, the eighth, Kael, the ninth, Barakel, the tenth, Azazel, the eleventh, Armors, the twelfth, Bardial, the thirteenth, Basasiel, the fourteenth, Ananel, the fifteenth, Teriyal, the sixteenth, Simapisiel, the seventeenth, Yedarel, the eighteenth, Tumiel, the nineteenth, Terel, the twentieth, Rumiel, the twenty-first, Azaziel. Verse 3. These are the chiefs of their angels, and the names of their leaders, and of their hundreds, and the leaders of their fifties, and the leaders of their tens. The name of the first is Yekul. He it was who seduced all the sons of the holy angels, and causing them to descend on earth that astray the offspring of men. The name of the second is Kesabel, who pointed out evil counsel to the sons of the holy angels, and induced them to corrupt their bodies by generating mankind. The name of the third is Gadrel. He discovered every stroke of death to children of men. Verse 7. He seduced Eve, and discovered to the children of men the instruments of the death, the coat of mail, the shield, and the sword for slaughter, every instrument of death to the children of men. Verse 8. From his hand were these things derived to them who dwell upon the earth, from that period forever. Verse 9. The name of the fourth is Penamu. He discovered to the children of men bitterness and sweetness, and pointed out to them every secret of their wisdom. Verse 11. He taught men to understand writing and the use of ink and paper. 12. Therefore, numerous have been those who have gone astray from every period of the world, even to this day. Verse 13. 
For men were not born for this, thus with a pen and with ink to confirm their faith. 14. Since they were not created, except that, like the angels, they might remain righteous and pure. 15. Nor would death, which destroys everything, have affected them. 16. But by this, their knowledge, they perish, and by this also it power consumes them. 17. The name of the fifth is Cassiadie. He discovered to the children of men every wicked stroke of spirits and of demons. Verse 18. The stroke of the embryo in the womb to diminish it. The stroke of the spirit by the bite of the serpent. And the stroke which is given in the midday by the offspring of the serpent. The name of which is Tibet. Which is pretty much demon possession. Verse 19. This is the number of the Kespel. The principal part of the old which the Most High, dwelling in glory, revealed to the Holy Ones. Its name is Becca. He spoke to Holy Michael to discover to them the sacred name, that they might understand that secret name, and thus remember the oath, and that those who pointed out every secret thing to the children of men might tremble at that name and oath. So we see in these writings of Enoch, where he gives warnings about the catastrophes of this generation, uh, that it sounds very much like this generation that it is speaking of, and all the evildoers that were influenced by these fallen angels, and, and today most people do not even know that, that is where all this wicked knowledge has come from. Now, these fallen angels that we're speaking of, that were condemned to 70 generations to the depths of the earth, are also uh, in the valley of fire and will in the end days be in uh, the valley and some people consider that the same area where Armageddon is but it speaks of it as being in the west where the mountains of gold and silver is later in the book of Enoch but it speaks of the valley of fire that all sinners along with the angels will be consumed with that but also that there is a severe and secret judgment against uh, individuals individually and that it will be a secret judgment, uh, different and severe, all the way to the end of time. Now, these are very important things, people. Are our sins worth this? When we think about the damage that we really do, when we do do these sins, or lead others astray, such as these fallen angels, we must realize that there is only salvation through the head of days that Enoch speaks so much of. He is called the elect one also. He is called the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God, and the Word became God, and, and, and in a sense, in flesh, uh, God in flesh as Jesus Christ. Not in a sense, but that's what he did, actually. I didn't know quite how to say that, but yes, and Yahshua, he died on the cross for us, or some know him as Jesus Christ, he had done this so that he could conquer death and be the victor and so that he could stay away from sin and not only that but cover our sins so that we would have a way for redemption and all you have to do is call upon Yeshua and acknowledge him every day turn over your life to him realize that you must give up these worldly possessions for they are only temporary anyway and even the secrets are temporary as Yahweh God Yahweh speaks of the most high the ancient of days so please take heed to these warnings and realize that Yahshua is the truth, the way, and he is the Christ. Do not be fooled by the false Christs that come along and that will try to deceive you. For when those people come, those people will be uh, distinguished differently uh, than the original Christ because when Christ comes the second time, it's going to be in a blink of an eye. It's going to be quick. And it's not going to be an all-day process to where you're going to go walking around with this new false Christ and then have a generation with him. No, he's coming. When he comes, he'll bring with him over 10,000 angels at least. And he will destroy all sin. And all the sinners will be consumed, such as the angels. Now all the righteous of the earth that have turned to Christ, they, their slates will be wiped clean. They will be found in the book of life, and they will become angels, as Enoch speaks of at that very moment, at the rapture, which is after the seventh trumpet, which is at the end of the great tribulation. But when these things happen, when these people die at the end, 
and they die for their witness for Christ, they will become like the righteous ones and join the armies of God. Now remember that he can defeat them without our help, therefore they are way outnumbered by the holy righteous ones, for they are countless in heaven. So please be on the winning side, please, I pray that your soul not be condemned to uh, eternal fire and void from God. What I mean by that is you will be separated also from God. That means you will never have any type of good luck again. Nothing ever will get better. Things will be horrible until the very end. So please take heed to this and realize that this is the truth. And Enoch is speaking divine words to you. Divinely inspired words by God Yahweh to warn you that we must turn to the head of days, the elect one, the son of man, Yahshua. Jesus Christ, our Savior. So let it be. Thank you.